If you like vintage drag cars, we well, are watching the right show. Drag racing was super, super popular in the mid-1960s, and by 1965, uh, 15 specially built lightweight drag racing Mercury Comet Cyclones were converted into what we call a B factory experimental class for NHRA racing, and the B class is a little bit different from AFX racing. AFX were the big block, high performance cars that by 1965 could have altered wheelbases and a lot of different custom elements, whereas the B class was a little more stock in its appearance. A lot of these BFX cars were actually campaigned by dealerships or groups of dealerships that uh, were able to promote themselves through racing. Uh, that statement certainly held true. What wins on Sunday sells on Monday. So these cars were definitely tools of dealerships to drive traffic into the showroom. Some of the dealers actually had the cars on display in the showroom to get people to come through the door. In this case, the group sponsorship was in the Atlanta District Mercury Dealers uh, and in specific George Purvis Motors in Cometland, USA, also known as Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I have to think that the kid hiding behind the Coke bottle and the decal and the fender meant maybe they got some sponsorship from Coca-Cola, which of course was based out of Atlanta. And this is the second to last of the 15 BFX cars to come out of Bill Strop Ford in Los Angeles. And the B-Class had a different power per cubic inch limit. So for example, the NHRA regulations stated that these cars had to have a nine pound per cubic inch minimum, which put a 289 cubic inch car at 2,600 pounds for BFX. Mercury did really well in the AFX class in 1964 with the 427 high riser powered cars. So for 65, they entered the BFX class, which was powered by small block cars like our 65 Cyclone. These cars were delivered from Strop with a Hypo 289 under the hood, a single four barrel carburetor, open Jardine headers, a top loader four speed transmission, a Ford nine inch rear end with a Detroit locker a locking differential heavy-duty springs, and giant traction bars to keep those leaf springs from wrapping up. Now, although this looks like a full-on race car, the F in FX racing meant factory. So the parts used had to have factory Ford part numbers on them. But that included uh, Cobra engines that were equipped with the four downdraft Weber carburetors with optional high compression cylinder heads. And although this started off as a 271 horsepower 289, by adding some of the special Ford race parts, uh, the power level started to go up and up and up. And those engines were rated at 395 horsepower at 7,000 RPM. Beyond that, you could put a roller camshaft and 10 and a half to one compression pistons in one of these little 289s and make over 415 to 420 horsepower. So these things were really capable, even though they were small block cars, because they were so lightweight, uh, that they were able to keep up against their company rival Ford Thunderbolts running the 427s. So this car's gone 1137 at 122.8, which is really in big block territory, even though it's just a 289. Now when you hear this thing run, it becomes obvious that this is not a regular street going Mercury Comet. This is a full on race car. And they were only available through participating Lincoln Mercury dealers. And of course they only made 15, so they were pretty hard to come by. Uh, there's supposed to be nine of these things accounted for at this point. Most of these BFX cars were raced locally, kind of around the dealerships that sponsored them, because after all, these were a full on racing advertisement for the local dealership. One way to make a car quicker is to make it lighter. And the rule book said it was okay to take the heavy body panels off and replace them with lightweight fiberglass versions. So this car is wearing a fiberglass hood, the bumpers, the fenders, the doors, the inside of the doors, even most of the interior are all made of fiberglass. So at first glance, it looks like an all steel Comet, but it's not. 
I mean, you'd expect to see a full roll cage and steel or aluminum trim panels inside a race car. You wouldn't expect to see carpet and a color matched dash and doors and something that looks, you know, like a regular headliner. But in this case, you have all that, but it's mostly fiberglass and just a mere shell of what the stock production vehicle would have. The dashboard has its gauges, but there's no radio, there's no heater. Uh, the windshield is glass, but the side windows and rear window are all plexiglass. And there is no back seat either. There's just a uh, blank panel where the back seat would go. However, it does have window cranks all the way around, which is kind of interesting. And it's got a production looking steering wheel. So it's kind of a mix of things that are identifiable to somebody who might go out and buy one of these cars from their local Mercury dealer, but disguised in a way that is really hiding full-on race car parts. If you take a close look at that 120 mile an hour speedometer, you notice the odometer shows 546.2 miles. Well, that was done a quarter mile at a time. This is not a car you would take out and go cruising in. Although, there is a story that when this car was owned by its original owner, George Purvis, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, the car was stored at his dealership and his son Patrick took it out and would cruise up and down the street from the dealership a little bit. It's an unofficial story, but they apparently didn't drive very far because it is showing less than 600 miles today. This car is definitely more at home on a drag strip than here in a parking lot, but it does get a chance to rattle the glass of the Brothers Collection every once in a while. Thanks for checking this video out. If you like more of this stuff, you can go to our website at musclecaroftheweek.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have more than 100 videos of cool muscle cars like this and a new one every week on Muscle Car of the Week.